Charles, we've got two doctors. <laughs> I do think that's pretty special. It's really a big thank you to Richard, Dr. Richard Natale, a senator and the leader of the Australian Greens, here to launch our campaign. And that is really fantastic because we've got a huge opportunity. North Sydney, so I'll hand you over to Richard. Terrific. Look, thanks so much, Lee. Thanks for that lovely introduction. And I, I was told I was coming to do a small press conference to announce Arthur. And wow, this is terrific. Thank you so much for coming along. It's 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 wonderful to see you all here. Thank you for everything that you do and for the contribution that you make to the Greens. Um, we've got a really exciting election coming up because what we're now showing to the Australian communities, we are the real opposition. Yeah. Well, we don't have the Labor Party has decided not to give the people of North Sydney an option and instead the contest that this election is about is Malcolm Turnbull who represents a party stuck in the past or Arthur representing a party that represents the future and that's what the choice is the past versus the future we were just talking about some of the big issues here in North Sydney of course lots of local issues when you've got, look, I flew, fly over Sydney whenever I come here and I'm amazed at how breathtakingly beautiful Sydney is. I still think Melbourne's a better city, but <laughs> it, is, it, is in, it is breathtakingly beautiful. And you've got a real fight on your hands to protect what precious natural biodiversity exists in these pockets of North Sydney. And uh, we need to do everything we can to make sure what's left is protected and is enjoyed by everybody rather than handed over to, to one vested interest or another in an effort to make a quick buck. So I'm sure that's going to be part of what this election campaign represents. But it's also an opportunity to talk about the big issues that face us as a nation. And there is no bigger issue than the challenge of global warming. And I, I've said this a number of, on a number of occasions. All of the work that we do, the work that you do in pr protecting your natural biodiversity, some of those precious spaces, that will all come to naught if we don't, as a nation, recognise the huge challenge that we have in tackling global warming, show some leadership on the world stage, ditch Abbott's climate targets, which Malcolm Turnbull says he will now take to Paris, and embrace some scientific evidence-based targets like we should do as a major contributor to the problem. So global warming and the tackle of the challenge uh, that lies ahead in tackling global warming will be front and centre in this election campaign. It's an opportunity for the people of North Sydney to say we care about this and we are going to vote for the only party that's prepared to take this issue head on. Then of course there's the issue of refugees and asylum seekers. I mean just showing a little more decency and compassion and there are so many things that we need to do in this space. We all want our offshore detention centre network closed. Mm -hmm. the and you'll hear, you'll hear all sorts of um, rationalisations for why we as a nation continue to support a policy that locks up young kids and that deprives them of all hope, that creates a generation of, of children and families that will suffer huge trauma as a result of their experience here and will be scarred forever. And no matter what the problem is, locking up young kids indefinitely in that environment can never be a solution. So we need to see an end to mandatory detention. What better opportunity for the new Prime Minister to say to the rest of the world, we're listening and we are going to ensure that children and their families are taken out of detention as a first step and yet nothing. Deafening silence from Malcolm Turnbull. And Labor. We had, and of course, the Labor. well, the Labor Party, I don't talk about Labor anymore. No, no, because no, no. They, are, they are missing in action, and we are the opposition. We are absolutely the real opposition. Um, let's look at the response to the Amnesty International report. Deafening silence. We have broken, according to Amnesty International, we've broken domestic law, international law, in an effort to pay people smugglers to rid ourselves of a problem, problem's still there, it's just not a domestic political problem, um, appalling. And yet we're celebrating the elevation of Malcolm Turnbull because it is supposed to represent a change in direction, but so far, precious few signs of that. The rhetoric's better, granted. And I took a huge sigh of relief 
when uh, when we saw uh, you know Tony Abbott lose the job. Good thing for the country. We all did. We all did. But it will all be for nothing if the policies remain. And that's where we are right now. Backing in Abbott's climate policies, backing in his refugee policies, same approach to marriage equality. And now we're talking about raising revenue from the people who can least afford it, rather than tackling multinational tax avoiders, superannuation tax concessions, negative gearing, all those things that we know are difficult, but need to be done, and we'll address that huge problem of growing inequality in Australian society. So we are the only party that's prepared to do it. We're a party that's optimistic, that's growing. I mean, I look, I come to an event like this and I'm just thrilled to see the level of support that we, that we have right across the country. This is not unique. We have more and more people engaging with us, supporting with us, and our vote is growing all the time. I'm sure that Arthur and Lee will do a fantastic job in representing us. And like I said, just as we finish off the press conference, you know, journalist there was trying to say we've got, you know, it's a pretty, pretty tough ask. Well, we had the Melbourne Cup this week. <laughs> 100 to 1 shot. We saw a 100 to 1 shot get over the line, so anything's possible. Especially with a woman writing. Yes. Um, introduce Arthur. I've worked very closely with Arthur. He has lived in the area for more than 20 years, um, worked as a doctor at uh, North Shore Hospital, and so he brings that experience of working for people um, in terms of that health experience, taking on the tobacco industry in one of the most courageous yeah. ways. Yeah. Yes, good, good shout out for bugger up. Look, if I had to say, say one word about Arthur and his courage, I had the opportunities to work with Arthur. Um, Arthur was in the state parliament for nearly um, a decade and saw that courage because in the period that Arthur and I, it's really worth mentioning this, um, when Arthur and I were in state parliament, it was those very ugly years of the corruption in the Labor Party playing out that end, ended up before I came. Eddie O'Bead, Ian MacDonald, Tony Kelly, Michael Egan. Now, they haven't all been found as corrupt, I acknowledge that, but by goodness me, the corrupting culture of politics there. And Arthur was often, as we are, others were, but Arthur was often ridiculed, abused, made fun of in the nastiest way. And what was the point? To shut people up, to, to stop them taking things on. But you know, that, that voice of exposing the rottenness that was going on, we at the time didn't realise how serious it was, how connected all this was, but it was taking it up publicly and within Parliament, which, when I look back on it, it was very, I believe, very significant. Not just about the tobacco industry, about the corrupting influence of political donations, and particularly something that's so important here. Richard has touched on it. What a beautiful area of the world this is. And what, what had still under threat because of the weak planning laws. Yep. What used to happen every year in Parliament, Labor, Liberal, Nationals voting together to weaken the planning laws. And there was uh, Arthur making speech after speech, moving the amendments, doing the hard yard. So it was a real privilege to work with Arthur. I was very excited to hear that he had put up his hand. Congratulations to the North Sydney. You have a fantastic team, Arthur. Um, super excellent, so it's good to be here. So please welcome Arthur. I feel like I've won the Melbourne Cup already. <laughs> <laughs> Not as good looking as the other one, though. No. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful. It's wonderful that you're here. I've really got a buzz out. So I've, been, I've been hit by a tsunami of support. It's absolutely wonderful. I mean, here's Richard and Lee saying nice things and doing stuff. I'm sorry you've, you've, been, you've all come. It's really great that you've come. Sorry you had to wait a long time. We had to go and keep the media happy, you know. <laughs> they are very important and we have to, have to get everything into 30 seconds. But, <laughs> But you've all been here and the, the support is wonderful and you guys are absolutely wonderful and, and I really am, am really pleased about the support and I think we are, we are on the national stage and we can take it to the national stage. And our issues, we've got an intelligent electorate here, we can have a more intelligent discussion perhaps than, than many p people could in, in their electorates and I think we can take that to the, to the country really and Richard's here to make that very point. And, and it's, it's vital that we do that and I'm just, 
You know, we were sitting there this morning uh, trying to figure out what do we do with all these people from out of, out of the electorate are coming to help us? How are we going to use them? Like, what a terrible problem to have, eh? <laughs> what a terrible problem to have. That's because of the enthusiasm we have here. So I just run over some policy stuff. I want to keep it short because God knows you've been here long enough already. Um, and I think the things like the foreshore land, the public land, the yep. public resources that are being given away by the Baird government, whether it's schools, whether it's railways, whether it's George Street, it's all being given away. Yep. And it's being given away because it's being bought by the lobbyists, by the Millennium Fund, by the corruption. Right? I was in tobacco and basically in 19... 50, it was shown to anyone who wanted to know that um, tobacco caused disease. In the 1960s, the medical establishment said, for God's sake, it's proved when we need to do something. And in 2000, we got smoke-free air. 40 years later. Why did it take 40 years? Because each year, each electorate, there was donations to the big party. Say what you like, but just don't do anything for the, next, for the term of this electorate. And it went on and on and on and on, with very little being done for years. And we had the coal industry determine. Just don't do too much, don't agree on renewable targets, don't promise anything at Kyoto, don't promise anything in Paris. On it goes. If we want clean air, and as a doctor I've seen the tobacco industry causing their trouble, I know that air pollution is insidious and it causes the problems, right? And the coal industry is happy to keep polluting because they're making the money and it's going to actually wreck the world. So we've got to stop the coal industry, we've got no new coal mines, we've got to stop climate change. We've got to get the jobs from renewable energy because it will make jobs. It'll make new, intelligent yeah. jobs. Yeah. It's not yeah. anti it's intelligent. Yeah. This is the sort of electorate where those sort of jobs will happen, where, it, where smart jobs are made and smart people get them. It's as simple as that. And we need the TAFEs to educate the people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I've got solar on my roof, I've had solar on my roof for ages, and it, the light keeps going red, and I, say to, I said to the guy, come and fix it. And he came and said, oh, it's your in inverter, and he replaced the inverter at $700, and the problem was still there. And I said, now you've made your easy money, mate, mm -hmm. now come and fix the panels on the roof that have probably got damp in them. Oh, well, well that's very difficult. <laughs> huh. Well, we need good tradesmen, that's the bottom line. We need them trained and we need TAFE to do them and we don't need dodgy tax dodgers uh, giving away free laptops to foreign students whether they graduate or not to make a quick buck with taxpayer money. We need an honest system, we need a, a, a publicly based system which is what TAFE is. You know that the St Leonard's TAFE's already been sold and given to the, as a school because we've got such a shortage of schools and now, of course, North Sydney tape's being threatened, and so is the one at North Ryde, which is not in this electorate, but the same principle applies. It's being scaled down. We've got to fight for our taste. That's a federal issue, and that's why it's got to be in this electorate. Now, we've got a problem of refugees, and each day we read the embarrassing uh, rantings of uh, ex-prime ministers in London or whatever, <laughs> saying the same stupid things they said before, God help us all. It's a national embarrassment to say, I'm an Australian, sorry. I don't like that. I don't like treating people callously. I don't like to know that Australia is spending as much money as the United Nations High Commission for Refugees on being nasty to people, whereas the, United, the uh, UNHCR has millions of refugees um, that they have to support with the same dollars that we are frittering away yeah. being nasty to people on Nauru and... Um, and Manus and Christmas Island. And I don't think the people of North Sydney want that. We want human decency. Yeah, yeah. And I think if you want to get, as from my point of view of preventive health, get to where the problem is. If you don't want people to leave the Middle East, don't bomb it. Yeah. It's really simple. Get out of the wall. Yeah. Get out of the wall. Every time we travel, we get uh, we, we, spend, we queue for hours to get through the security systems. Now we have thought police to go chasing the children in our schools, lest they be radicalised by Islam, for God's sake. Well, if their country wasn't being bombed, and if their people weren't being bombed, and if their religion weren't being bombed, then they might not be get rad radicalised. It's not some quirk of their religion, you know. It's some actual fact of Western policy in the Middle East, and it's time somebody said so, and I'm happy to do that role. <laughs> So I think that's uh, the key things I want to say. I really appreciate the help that's been offered and, I, and we've got to coordinate to, to make that, to turn that into a real election success and, that, and really give a big shake 
to the Liberals who are smug as all hell yeah, and treat this as a fait accompli and the media who want to treat this as a fait accompli yes, as well. Yeah, and so any help you guys can give, I really appreciate and I will do as good a job as I can. Yeah. Saturday, December 5 is election day. But between here and that date, there is a huge amount of work to do. And first off, thanks very much. There's a lot of people who aren't from this election who have come along to support. One of the wonderful things about the Greens is that when it comes to election times, there is such a buzz around the place. And when it's a by-election, we can all buzz into the one election. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quite amazing. Even back in the what I call the 2% years in the early 1990s, when there was a by-election, people would just appear from all over the place, seriously tra travel hundreds of miles to come along and to um, join and give that support. So. When you're, um, if you're not on the list yet, if you've just turned up and you would like to work out how you would get involved, I'll just introduce you to some people. So please give your contact details before you go. Roz is campaign coordinator. <laughs> issues to make this a fairer society. Election campaigns are a great opportunity to get those messages out. And what a contrast with Arthur, with the cigar chomping man who is so out, of, so out of touch with how ordinary people live. Like Arthur is real. Arthur is somebody that we can get up there and proudly campaign for. 